Welcome, Anna. As uh, you know, I'm Senator Stan Kucher, and I have just found out today that your son and me have the same name, Stanislav. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you a lot. It's a pleasure for me to be here in Canada. Thank you. It's so nice to have you. And the reason that you're here is to tell your story to Canadians so that Canadians have a better appreciation and understanding of what life is like for children and their families in Ukraine. So can you take a few minutes and just share with us some of the things that you have lived through over the last little while? Yes, I think I have to tell my story because this is a miracle that I can be here in front of you. And this miracle was only possible due to Ukrainian militaries. So I have spent 65 days in the shelter of the Azovstal steel plant in the city of Mariupol, my native city, which was practically killed by Russians. Uh, and I was there with my three months old baby. And it was really a challenge of life to be there and to be alive. Mm -hmm. My husband that time, he was a soldier. He was a military of Azov regiment and he was badly injured uh, when he was defending the Mariupol city from Russian occupation and unfortunately right now during six months already he's in captivity and I have no idea where he is. I don't know if he has an access to food, water, medicine. I don't know if he's tortured or not. So uh, right now I'm here uh, to present the voice uh, of people who are voiceless right now. To present the voice of people who are in captivity. You know, it must be so hard to be away from people you love. And it also must have been very, very difficult just to survive. We hear about the tunnels that people lived in and, and Canadians wouldn't have a clue about what that was like. What was like a day or so, what was that like for you and your son? It was really tough to be there because it was a challenge for me, not only like for a woman or like a human, but also for a mother, young mother of a such little baby. Um, due to Ukrainian militaries, I had baby formula and uh, I had no electricity, so that's why I was using candles in the shelter and I was using also a metal cup and every day I was just for 30 or 40 minutes trying to heat up baby formula for Sviatoslav in order to feed him. Uh, also, unfortunately, I have a concussion because Russians were bombarding us constantly, every day. And they knew that in these shelters are civil people. They knew that in these shelters are children also. So due to Ukrainian militaries, I'm alive and I'm here. But unfortunately, to go away from Azovstal steel plant shelters, uh, I passed through the filtration camps which Russians are created nowadays in 21st century. Mm -hmm. And a Canadian may not know what a filtration camp is. Can you describe what happens in a filtration camp? Unfortunately, filtration camp is a disgusting procedure which Russians uh, took, I think, from the Second World War. Um, this is the procedure which helps them to understand if they would like to take a person to the captivity or they would like to let this person go. When I was in the filtration camp, I was totally naked in front of the Russian soldiers and they were touching me everywhere. And they took my phone, that downloaded all the private information that I had on my phone, all the photos, videos, all data, all social media. So Russians has they have no respect to everything which is private. After that, they took my fingerprints and they were actually treating me like I'm a prisoner. Uh, and also I was interrogated by uh, three persons from FSB and they told me that it's better for me to say all the information about Ukrainian militaries or otherwise I could die. And only after four days of such treating, uh, they let me go. And I think they let me go only because the representatives of Red Cross in the United Nations were near me. Wow, that's horrific. That's horrific. I mean, it's just beyond a, a, a person living in Canada, their imagination, just degrading and dehumanizing. That is true. What are Russians wrong doing in Ukraine? They are committing a real genocide. Because Russians want to prove to us, to Ukrainians, that we don't exist, that our language doesn't exist. 
uh, and also right now they are trying to take our children away from Ukraine. They are trying uh, to take children to Russia. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Russians are committing a genocide, for sure uh, there is no way for Ukrainian children to uh, have love in Russian family. Nobody would like to adopt a uh, Ukrainian child. So we can only imagine the purposes for which Russians are taking our children. So, I mean, that's horrific. Just taking children from families and just taking them into places that they have no idea. They strip them of their culture, they strip them of their language. Um, and I've even heard stories about using children in modern slavery ways all sorts of different kinds of things which sound horrible. Is that what, what, what is happening? Yes, that is true. You know, Russians, they are raping our children. They are killing them. Already we have 437 children who were killed. And I think, unfortunately, this number will be increasing and increasing because there are a lot of children and uh, they are lost. They are lost, for example, in my native city, in Mariupol, and we can't even count how many are killed. It's practically impossible. So that's why it's so important for us to have a support from Canada. And so Canadians need to know this. It's not just some theoretical war between two armies somewhere on a battlefield. It's actually human beings, civilians, mothers, children, losing their lives, genocidal interventions. Uh, that's what is happening. Yes, actually Russians, they are fighting not only with Ukrainians, they are fighting with all democratic and civilized world. Right, it is uncivilized to say the least. Now, Canada has done some things, but there may be more things that Canada could do right now. Uh, do you have any ideas about some other things that Canada consider helping in? Uh, first of all, I think uh, Canada could make some donations to Ukraine. Secondly, Canada can help us to find lost uh, children who are in Russia. Mm. And also we know that winter is coming and uh, we don't know how it will be for our children because we don't have electricity, we don't have gas. Uh, and maybe Canadians could provide a kind of program to have our Ukrainian children temporary for maybe two, three months uh, in their families to host our children. So during this really difficult winter time when resources are going to be scarce, the electricity is a problem, it's very cold in Ukraine in the winter time, this would be a, a good suggestion. Yes, it would be great because for sure we are trying to be prepared for this cold winter. We are buying generators, but you can only imagine, for example, for the doctor to make the operation uh, with only with the help of a generator. Mm -hmm. And you can't explain to your patient that the light is off, there is no electricity and uh, the doctor can't continue this operation. So that's why it's so necessary for us to have such kind of support, at least for our children. Right. Well, you know, thank you so much for that. I completely agree with you. I'm hopeful that Canadians, as we do, we stand up because we're standing up not just for a concept of Ukraine, we're standing up for, as you said, the democratic world. But, and this is so important, we're standing up for real people, women and children who are suffering horribly. Thank you that you stand with Ukraine. I really appreciate this. Thank you.